Hi everyone. I've been absolutely dying to come on and make this video, but the truth be told, I had challenging times after coming back from Ibiza. Not because of any particular reason, but I just seemed to feel a bit low and it was difficult to get back into the swing of things. Anyhow, I'm feeling good now and here I am. So I'd love to tell you just a little bit about the ups and downs of planning a wedding abroad and you know how it all came about. So if you're interested, Clive proposed to me in Ibiza in April this year and it came as a real surprise because some weeks before I had let go of the idea of getting married, I suppose in my mind, and I'd even done a little ceremony with a friend of mine. Uh, she had said to me, is he ever going to ask you to marry him? And I said, you know what, I want to let it go because I'm committed to him one way or the other. And having that going on in the back of my mind it was sort of tiring, really, you know, when you have an idea or an expectation. So we did a little very purposeful ceremony to just let go. And I just felt like I'm committed to love and to him. So either way, it's fine. So a few weeks later, we were in Ibiza and he proposed in a beautiful village called Santa Gertrude. And it was really special and really magical. And of course, I said yes. So me being me, I shared the news with half the island <laughs> people I met. I was so excited. And a lot of people said to us, oh, if you get engaged in Ibiza, you have to get married in Ibiza. So we decided there and then that that's what we were going to do. And we didn't see any reason really to wait. Uh, so we looked at October as a date because it's a quiet time on the island. The clubbing season is over and flights are cheaper and for lots of reasons it made sense to us. So the first impulsive thing I did, um, me being me, was to send out text messages to all the people we wanted to invite and to tell them that the area we were getting married in was going to be well it was one or two one of two areas that we really liked so people then went and booked apartments etc in those areas okay so that was a mistake because it transpired that we couldn't get a villa suitable for a wedding in either of those areas and it was you know too late all our friends had booked now it worked out fine in the end, but had I wanted everybody closer, then you know that wasn't ideal. And that's where my impulsivity sometimes um, is a, a bother. It serves me well at other times, but that's what I did. So we researched villas and you can't have a party in any villa, which is what they consider a wedding to be. So there's specific villas that are rented just for weddings. So we had difficulty finding one because some of them you want you there for 60 people and then some of them are for, I think it was 30 people and we had asked 45. No, we hadn't got back our final numbers, but we, we did ask 45. But eventually when we got our numbers in, um, it was settling in around 35, had kind of booked pretty much straight away and said they were definitely coming. So we could kind of guesstimate around 35, 36. And we did find a villa that was willing to work with us. And that was great. And it, it turned out to be the most amazing place. It was really beautiful. So the hidden cost was that they there's an extra charge on top of the price of the villa to have a wedding in the villa, which I think was about a thousand euro was the extra cost. Uh, the villa itself slept 12. So um, a lot of our friends and family came and stayed with us. They were quite happy. And then other people who wanted more privacy booked apartments. So it, it all that worked out perfectly. And my children got a separate villa with their partners and their friends. So all that was good. Um, and the villa itself was amazing. And they supplied everything we needed in terms of chairs and tables and extra plates and glasses and all that kind of thing was all available to us. There was an outdoor kitchen, pizza ovens, um, barbecue, anything like that, that was all there. 
amazing swimming pool. We were overlooking the sea, beautiful gardens, etc. And of course, you don't really, you know, you're looking at pictures, but you don't see all that until you get there. So that was, it, it was perfect. It was absolutely perfect. And the owners of the villa were incredibly helpful and generous with us. So that's, uh, you know, it was a real plus, And I suppose fairly straightforward and fairly easy. The second thing that we uh, needed to organize was what we were going to do around food. So we did look into catering and it was proving really expensive. It was difficult to find anybody that would give you a decent meal for less than 60 euro per head. When you went all the way down to like say 30 euro per head, you were really looking at hors d'oeuvres or, you know, sort of snacky things. Um, so we decided that we were going to do the food ourselves. Now it worked out really well. The food was amazing. Um, we had hot and cold dishes, lots of cold meats, breads, different things like that. That was fantastic. Um, however, the, like I suppose there was the hassle of going to the supermarket doing this massive, hilarious shop. And, uh, and then there was the, um, I suppose, the imposition maybe on my guests because there was more work involved than I imagined. In my naivety, I kind of thought, oh yeah, buy some cold meat, some nice breads. And I had a friend who'd offered to cook the hot meal, so that was sorted. But it actually ended up being, you know, more work than I thought. Now, nobody seemed to mind. They seemed to be really, really happy to do it. So, you know, I'm very grateful. And they pulled out all the stops. They were amazing. They really were amazing. And everybody commented on the food afterwards and how relaxed it was. And so we also hired waitresses because we did feel we didn't want to be doing all that ourselves. So we hired through a company called the Chef Bitha, and I cannot say enough about them. Now we hired them a week before the wedding, which was amazing. I was still negotiating and chatting to them um, the day before we left, but they were brilliant. And the reason that was so late is because another service um, fell through, it didn't work out because they well they just weren't corresponding and they weren't great so this this crowd were brilliant and we actually ended up exchanging emails with the waitresses and they sang one of them sang for us at the um at the after party and yeah they were magic and they couldn't have done enough the other downside to catering yourself or doing something like that is that the following morning even though the waitresses had actually stayed on an extra hour there was a massive cleanup Four of us did it, we got stuck in. I was one of them. I'd had two and a half hours sleep. I got off the next morning and I just started clearing and cleaning. But you know what? Even while we were doing it, we had good crack. And by 12, I think I got up at eight and by 12 o'clock it was more or less done. So, you know, that wasn't the end of the world. And I did have good fun doing it with my son and his girlfriend and Sophie's boyfriend. So, you know, that was fine. Uh, another mistake I made was the if you want to call it a mistake the flowers so we decided that we were going to get flowers in Aldi or Lidl and we're going to make our own bouquets and I'm quite creative I'm good at stuff like that so I kind of thought that's going to be fine but they don't sell flowers in Aldi or Lidl so it's the day before the wedding it's the Friday afternoon we're absolutely roasting we've trolley fulls of stuff we have bought all the drink like three full trolleys it was just it was kind of crazy and yeah no flowers so my two beautiful brides or two of my beautiful bridesmaids went off and they made that their mission to find flowers and they did they found absolutely beautiful flowers in Ibiza city they made beautiful bouquets they made centerpieces for the table um the, the morning of the wedding there was a little market on our local town and a beautiful woman gave me a little red flower and I put that in my hair and the bridesmaids had put red in the bookcase. It, it was perfect. It was all perfect. So it did work out, but it was a bit stressful. So I suppose the things that really stressed me, I didn't sleep the two nights before the wedding. And one of the things that I should have done was made lists before I went to bed of the things I had to say to people and the things that needed to be done. And I didn't do that. And so instead I was just lying awake in the middle of the night, afraid of waking Clive up so that he'd get his sleep, but just tossing and turning and thinking, oh, I must say this to so-and-so and I must organize that and I need to get this. And 
oh, do we have napkins and etc. etc. So that bit was a bit stressful. Now, spoke to I spoke to another wedding guest who had got married in the summer, done a five star fabulous wedding in a castle, and she said she didn't sleep the couple of nights before her wedding either. And you know, she wasn't trying to organize food and everything, so maybe it's just a bride thing. I don't know. Uh, what fell into place so easily was the ceremony itself. So I had written it out. I had, it was all kind of my own putting together, except for Clive's vows. He wrote those himself. So I put together the ceremony. Um, our beautiful friend Peter performed the ceremony. And through Facebook, I found a group that would play at the wedding, doing the kind of spiritual music that I really like, which is Hindu kirtan music. So I found that really easily on Facebook and was in touch with a gorgeous guy during the summer who was all very easy and straightforward. So all of that was absolutely wonderful and easy. So the only thing I would say that I didn't do well was maybe my research beforehand. And, you know, I was kind of impulsive about things and that's very much my nature. So going with the flow was great, but yeah, it had some drawbacks so to speak but the actual day itself and everything around it was just magical and not planned I mean there was a magnificent meadow beside the the villa part of the garden or whatever and we got exquisite photographs there and you'll see I'm going to put up a little video of you know the I suppose uh, clips of the photographs I don't know how to do that yet to join them all together but Clive will help me and I am going to put that up but you'll just see how exquisite it was the other thing we did was the morning of the wedding Clive and I went looking for a beach because it had been too busy up until then so we wanted to find a nice beach to take photographs on so that was very last minute.com we got up we had breakfast we had a swim in the pool we had a shower and we headed off to find a beach and we did Within about 10 kilometers, we found a gorgeous beach and we said, OK, you know, we're just going to ask the universe now to have a little spot clear for us later on in the afternoon when we come to take the photos. And yeah, we did have a space clear. Wonderful uh, savings were things like Clive's daughter is a really good photographer. Plus, our friends took numerous photographs, so that was great. Um, her boyfriend is a mixologist, so he makes cocktails and all that. So they set up a beautiful little cocktail bar. Um, the other thing was we didn't have a band. So my daughter had put together a playlist. But as it happened, there was so much talent in our guest list of 35 that we didn't need to have a playlist or anything like that. I think we played about 10 songs maybe and had a little bit of a bop. But people sang um people did acts different things it was hilarious it was great fun and so much fun that you know we all ended up in the pool as well at the end of the night and in the best possible way you know it was just oh, i was wonderful it was really good and i feel really blessed and i just love the fact that you can plan an amazing wedding abroad from april to october and that it goes off so smoothly and that everything is perfect, including the light, including your guest list, um, including your music, including your food. It was just, it was wow. And the biggest outlay, I think, was the, the cost of the villa. Um, after that, the food and all the drink probably came in about 1500 Our flights on top of that and... Then whatever we spent on, you know, our wed my wedding dress and Clive's suit and everything. But all in all, wow, like we had an exceptional wedding at a very low cost. There weren't even wedding invitations. There were text messages. So except for I think there was a few invitations went over to the UK and actually those people didn't come. So that was interesting. But yeah, all in all, absolutely fantastic. I felt all your love and support throughout the time we were there. And I really look forward to putting up, as I say, a little kind of slideshow of the actual day or maybe a few clips, but I just have to figure out how to do that. Um, and when this bride, uh, yeah, this Queen Bride series finishes, just watch out for more videos. Please like and subscribe. 
If you have any questions about getting married abroad or anything that I'd recommend or wouldn't recommend, please get in touch or leave a message below. Look forward to chatting to you again. Take care. Bye.